Please be seated as I pray. Father God, you are indeed the rock of ages. You are the creator. You have already existed. You always will exist. You shall exist forever into eternity. Lord, can we hide ourselves in you? You are the one who gave us a savior. You are the one who gave us your only beloved son. I pray now as we spend time remembering him around his table, you would grant us eyes to see your intention in the words of Scripture, you would grant us your grace to understand it and apply it to our lives. Oh, Jesus, we want to remember you well. We ask for your help. We plead it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever wondered who it is you're supposed to turn to when you're in a trial? when you're looking for comfort, when you're looking for peace, when you're looking for security. Today, for our time around the Lord's table, we're going to see what Jesus says about that. Whenever we find ourselves in a trial that relates to our finances or our health or our relationships or our vocation, even our very own faith, we're going to find out what Jesus says about where we should turn in times of trouble, in times of trial. So if you have a Bible with you, would you turn with me to John chapter 14, We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 6. The men are coming down the aisle, and if you don't have a Bible with you, would you just raise your hand? They will get a copy of God's Word to you. And if you don't actually own a Bible and you would like to start reading God's Word for yourself, you may keep that Bible for yourself so that you can read God's revelation of Himself to you. The setting here in John 14 is that Jesus is with His disciples He's on the night of his arrest and his betrayal. He is on the night before his crucifixion. And he has been making the disciples come to understand that he will be leaving them. And his disciples are very, very troubled over this because their understanding has always been that Jesus will always be with them. So they're very, very troubled men. And they are looking at a trial. Life without Jesus is going to be a trial for them. As we read our passage today, we want to look at the instruction that Jesus gives to his disciples in verse 1. We also want to look at the reason for that. The reason is given in verses 2 and 3. And then the substance of that is going to be in verse 6, where Jesus tells him about himself. Let's read together. Jesus says to his disciples, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. We see Jesus' acknowledgement that the disciples are very, very troubled people in verse 1. He knows they're troubled. But the instruction he gives them is at the end of the verse. The instruction is, believe also in me. He's saying to them, I know you believe in God. I know you do. And because you believe in God, believe in me. I've told you that I and the Father are one. I've told you that when you see me, you see the Father. Believe in me the same way you believe in the Father. So that's what Jesus is telling them. He's telling them, put your confidence in me in a trial. Then he gives them more detail about how it is and why it is that they should do that in verses 2 and 3. He tells them about the Father's house. And he says that in this house, there are many, many dwelling places. There are many of them. And then he speaks with specificity here, and he says, I am going there, and the reason why I'm going there is I'm going there to prepare a place for you, specifically for you. He knows that they're going to start thinking about how it is that Jesus gets them there and how it is that they get there, so he tells them in verse 3, if I'm going to go there and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you to me. I'm going to receive you to myself. That's what Jesus says. Notice two things about that. Notice, one, the direction. The disciples are becoming to Jesus. 
They're going to be coming to Jesus. And then notice who is doing the work. The work there is that Jesus is doing the receiving of the disciples. So Jesus is telling the disciples, your confidence here is not to be in yourself. Your confidence is to be in me because of what it is that I am going to do. I am going to receive you to myself. My father has a house with many dwelling places, and one of them is there for you. Then Thomas speaks on behalf of all of the disciples. He indicates that they really don't understand what it is that Jesus is saying. Thomas says, Lord, we... We don't know where you're going, and we don't know the way. Thomas indicates that what the disciples are thinking about is a journey here. They're thinking about a path. They think about a direction of which direction they put their feet in. Where does one foot go in front of another? And Jesus tells us in verse 6, this is not about a direction on this earth. This is not about a journey on this earth. It's not about a path on this earth. It's about me personally. And you need to understand three things about me. And what you need to understand is I am the way that there is no other name on earth under heaven by which you can be saved. I am the only one. You must understand that. And Jesus says, I am the truth. He's saying, I am the centerpiece. I am the crux. I am the content of the gospel. The gospel that God is sending a savior to reconcile sinful men to himself. He's going to hang on a cross. And he's going to receive on himself God's fury and judgment against all of those who would put their trust in him. Jesus said, that is entirely about me, that is truth about me, that is truth about nobody else, that is who I am. And in that, you receive forgiveness and a pardon for your sin when you put your faith and your trust in me as one who has been declared righteous. But then Jesus also says that he is the life. It isn't just that a believer has pardon, has forgiveness from their sin, they actually have new life. And just as Jesus is going to be raised from the dead after he's crucified here, three days later he's raised from the dead, the believer has the ability to walk in newness of life. All of that, Jesus says, is wrapped up in who I am. I am the way. I am the only way you can be saved. Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the content of the gospel. And I am the one through whom you receive new life when I raise myself from the dead. That's how we want to remember Jesus this morning, if you're a believer if you're a believer, look at these claims of Jesus. He claims to be the way, the truth, and the life. If as a believer you believe these things about Jesus, we are so thankful that you do, and we would invite you to join us in remembering Jesus this morning. When the elements come to you, just take them and hold them and ponder these truths about Jesus. Ponder his kindness that the Father made you able to understand that Jesus himself is the only way by which you can be saved, and that the gospel is entirely about Jesus and his work on your behalf on the cross. And it is through his resurrection that you have eternal life. You have the ability to live a new life. When you've prepared your heart for that, take the elements when you are ready to do so. If you're here as one who is not a follower of Jesus, Jesus is telling you something really kind here. What he's telling you is whatever plan, whatever design you have to save yourself, to reconcile yourself to a holy God that's apart from me, it will fail you. It will fail you. And you will find that at the end of your life. What Jesus is telling you here today is you have the opportunity to find that out today rather than at the end of your life. Put your trust in Jesus as the only one who can reconcile you. The Lord's table is for all of those who are followers of Jesus. So if you are one who is not a follower of Jesus, simply take the elements and pass them to the person who is next to you. But use this time as an opportunity to ponder the truths that Jesus is claiming about himself and how a sinner is reconciled to a holy God. So men, come and serve us, and I'll close our time in prayer.